Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. After uh, last episode's adventure with uh, putting a crew down on Mars, I figured it would probably be a good idea to step into the VAB and uh, build a small mock-up of uh, the situation that we have uh, out there on Mars and uh, see what can be done about uh, getting this thing pointed skyward. So uh, I've made this small replica, and we're actually just going to test to see if this decoupler can fire without it taking out the engine bells. So we're going to run a simulation and get this thing outside. And here we are, outside. Uh, this actually turned out to be uh, quite a long endeavor because thrust-weight ratio here on Earth is a lot different than it is on Mars. Surprise, surprise. So uh, we're going to uh, let the engines run for quite a good long while. And uh, yeah, starting to see our thrust to weight ratio down there in the uh, 0.4 range. Uh, it was a little depressing, especially because I forgot to up the time on the simulation. So it was actually going to uh, keep stopping somewhere in the middle and ask me to pay more money uh, to keep the simulation going. But uh, in an effort to speed this along a little bit, uh, I decided to dump some of the uh, food and water to kind of lighten our load a little bit. And uh, we'll actually dump a bunch of oxygen. It doesn't weigh a whole lot, but every little bit helps. So we're just now getting to the 0.5 range uh, on that TWR. Uh, the lithium hydroxide's already dumped. We'll keep the simulation going and uh, keep venting oxygen in the atmosphere. Eventually I will resort to using uh, physics time warp and uh, trying, I hit the dump on dump button on the lithium hydroxide in the main window so it just keep running the noise which was really really irritating me and uh, there was a bump in and out of time warp that was super productive but basically I just want to get this thing airborne so I can see what happens if we fire that decoupler uh, with that uh, extra tank attached below us and uh, how much that's going to like I said affect the engine bells or maybe take one of them out because uh, that would be tragic and that would require immediate rethinking of absolutely everything that we're trying to do uh, out there on Mars and if that won't work we're gonna have to move that tank to someplace else really the only other place we can attach it is that uh, docking port up top see the decoupler is our root part so we can't move it, but we can get rid of it. All right, and there's a positive thrust to weight ratio. We are airborne, finally. We'll stage it away and somehow lose avionics and go piling into the ground. Anyway, back into the VAB. Uh, I don't think we're going to lose avionics out on Mars. So it seemed to be controllable just fine, but that is something to put in the back of our mind. But it does... It makes me nervous, and it doesn't quite look right. So I figure we can scrap one of these uh, structural components uh, from the rover. I know we've got at least two of them out there for that. And uh, that'll help space that tank out a little bit and also give us a, a little bit better of a uh, launch pad, I guess. So we'll try to reattach these uh, landing legs in a similar fashion to our situation out at Mars. And uh, this was my initial plan, was to pull a hinge from the wheel of the rover and attach a girder segment. I think that uh, we have at least one of these out there. And then I uh, use that with a uh, hinge to tip us over. Now, obviously, in with just one, it's not really going that well. We keep uh, rolling off to a side. Yeah, so we're probably going to need more than just the single girder on this, I think. We do, however, have the option to make it a lot worse. Yeah, not that we couldn't fix that. That's no worse than uh, where we started. Anyway, back to the VAB. So, um... Now I'm not sure about what girder sections we do have out there. Um, like I said, I'm pretty sure we have two of these and maybe two of the long ones. So we'll just try to make a little T and uh, see if this doesn't work a little bit better. Now I'll give it more of kind of a, a wider handle to uh, actuate from. Yeah, that went real well. Uh, well, all right then.
Back to the drawing board. All right. So. Hmm. One of these won't work. Maybe we should just uh, try our hand with two. I'm pretty sure I've got two of these long girders out there on the rover making up the chassis. So uh, let's take this outside and see how well it works. All right. Come on, baby, please, please work. Okay. Servo controls. Uh, and a little interference with the gear. Yes. Oh, that's... Well, not quite enough. I guess if we just move these hinges down the body a little bit, we can get it to rest up on that, uh, that base plate. Perhaps... But uh, that's pretty good. I think our thrust to weight ratio on Mars is like 1.4, 1.5. We might actually be able to take off like this. Yeah, of course. I did not bring a drill. That would have been uh, that would have been useful. Yeah, Val doesn't have one either. All right. Well, I am curious to know what our uh, figures are going to be without those gear. Anyway, back to the uh, VAB. All right. That worked pretty well. So let's pull them down the chassis just a little bit, <clears throat> retract our landing gear, and uh, see if this doesn't do it. All right, just a few minor changes made. And we'll fold those out. Yeah, they don't clear. Won't be able to attach the hinges that low. All right, let's see just how much clearance it does by us though. So. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. It, ooh. Okay. All right. It's standing. Good. That worked. That totally worked. And we can collapse those the rest of the way in. I'm really hoping we can detach them before launch, though, just to save the mass. Those might create some kind of issue, but that rocking forward... Anyway, I'm very happy with this prototype, so uh, I think we can go ahead and radio on out to the crew on Mars and see if we can't get this thing rolling to Mars. All right, well, we are rejoining our crew back here on Mars in a little bit of a uh, speddy uppy bit. We'll go ahead and uh, get Nina out here eventually and uh, get her to uh, collect the data from these two outside instruments. We kind of forgot about that later, but... We can go ahead and have her deposit that data, get her trusty DeWalt drill ready, and uh, collect those two antennas. And first up, get the rover right side up. We're gonna, we would like it a lot closer if we're gonna do all this work to it. All right, so how do we flip this thing over? All right, hmm. Let's take these antennas. They are deployable. They should be able to push the rover. I remember people in chat telling me that antennas would be able to move stuff. So we'll get one up here towards the front. Okay, that, is it? Yeah, okay, it's off. Good, good, good. Force open. Oh! Well, we took out the flag, but hey, look at that! That totally worked! Oh, that's perfect. So now if we just fold out these wheels, we can totally get this thing right side up again. Oh, yes. No, nope. okay. Don't walk through the antenna. Board? Yes. Oh, this is so totally going to work. Fold out your wheels. Yes. Oh, perfect. Oh, that's awesome. Breaks off. Yes. All right. Let's get it uh, back up to the uh, launcher. And it's uh, just a quick drive. But we'll uh, go ahead and get ourselves parked over here uh, ladder side-ish. Make sure the brakes are set. I uh, tried to do a radio in. Uh, apparently it doesn't work anymore. So we're just going to uh, run all our instruments uh, manually and collect their results. Uh, we did get results from all of that stuff from the uh, 
lowlands biome, but we need to go ahead and get it here at Olympus Mons. Uh, we can double up our science. Unfortunately, we do not have radio comms contact, where I would be trying to triple up on these and basically uh, radio in everything from the Olympus Mons biome and then run the experiments again to uh, uh, take back up to our lab and, uh, I don't know, run the data again so we can get even more science. But uh, Nina's going to take a quick lap around the rover here and just uh, collect data from all of our instrumentations. Apparently we can't collect the avionics from the core, and that's, that's kind of weird. And um, there's our atmospheric analysis. All right, first thing we really do need to take care of is that uh, solar panel thing, but uh, we're gonna ditch these thrusters. We have hopefully no real use for them right now. Uh, I totally should have just taken the car the first time because we can't carry that big hefty solar panel all the way back. It just uh, does, it's too heavy for her to even put in her back pocket. So we'll uh, collect this panel. We'll just mount it up here safely away from the wheels. Maybe we'll remember not to retract the wheels, although it's been uh, brought to my attention that it was not those wheels or that solar panel that uh, caused the last rover incident. It was one of the actual stock panels that were built onto the rover interestingly enough. All right, let's take this uh, solar panel and we're gonna take these antenna. Now that we know that they actually do stuff, now we're gonna grab the solar panel. Can't quite get it over to the ascent stage yet, but uh, another just couple of quick steps. It's a temporary mounting location. Nina's gonna use this ladder that she has to jump to get to. Remove it one more time and just get it uh, someplace facing skyward and uh, force it open. That should take care of our battery problems with the uh, ascent stage and keep our batteries nicely topped off while we're trying to uh, sort out how we're gonna do stuff here. And it's uh, about time to start breaking down the rover. We need to clear up some room in inventory first. So we're going to uh, install these two antenna. Now that one was deployed and didn't actually do anything uh, when we attached it. So that's something we're going to have to look into uh, a little bit later. It's just, uh, it's kind of weird. Anyway, we're going to try to start breaking down the rover a little bit so we can get some of these girder sections off, which means uh, removing the headlights and uh, kind of our ambient area lights. Switch sides and go repeat the process over here. There's going to be a lot of deconstructing on this poor little thing if we're going to get all the gutsy parts that we need. As you can see, the chassis is actually just one big long girder, maybe two extensions on it. So unfortunately, that whole twin leg uh, lift support idea thing is going to go right out the window. We only have but the one uh, long girder segment that we can use for a leg. So we're probably going to have to rethink our entire approach to this thing, or at least uh, we're gonna have to figure out some way to do this with a uh, single leg girder with maybe just a wide enough base on it to make it happen. And I think this uh, plate down here might make a plenty good footprint or foot piece or uh, said girder segment. So we'll just uh, start to clear that off also. Yeah, it's uh, it's the root part of the lander. Great. <laughs> uh, just great. So I was really hoping that we could uh, detach this life support tank from in here so that maybe we could keep the rover mobile. But it's too heavy, so I figured maybe we'd empty some of it out. And then uh, maybe then she would be able to detach it from that uh, inner bay part. But uh, I just, I don't think that's going to work. So let's switch back over to the lander. And, uh, all right, sun exposure is good. All right, let's try this. Maybe the force open didn't work. So we'll try activating them from the cabin. And get these as close to one another as possible. Activate. Activate. Nothing doing. They, they're trying though. 
they're doing something. Just maybe they don't have quite enough angle. Yeah, you see that that thunk. Hmm. It's the roll that really bothers me. So I wonder if we're gonna have to do something different with that base plate. Ah, uh, dang it. Great. Well, we'll uh, switch back around for a few things here. Eventually landing back at Nina. <sighs> this is, uh, we got our work cut out for us. Leave seat. Thank you. All right. In the meantime, we're just going to give the uh, ascent stage a quick top off. We did uh, leave them uh, overnight. Link. So I guess it would be nice to uh, top off their supplies again, just uh, just to make sure in case anything tragic should happen to the uh, rover while we're doing any of this work that uh, these two can. I don't know, have at least that two weeks of supplies before we uh, tuck them in. As you can see, the sun is getting really low uh, there on the horizon based on our shadows. So I think it's probably time that she just call it a day. Yeah, uh, we got a duplicate experiment. No big deal. All right. Well, it's probably a good place for us to leave it to while we need to brainstorm and try to figure out how to get out of this mess. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.